Welcome to Tough Crowd. There's a lot of tension in the world right now. Forget about the war in Iraq, Al-Qaeda, rogue states with nuclear bombs. I'm talking about Reuben and Clay. Two southern bells <laughs> that have united our country. Ari Fleischer left his job yesterday, the stress. Christine Whitman left the EPA, the stress. Does Clay quit? No. Does Reuben quit? No. You don't think they both had hard times? You don't think Reuben walking to school, he's little, all the kids, fat boy, kicking him and stuff, you know? <laughs> and Clay, I found out, was the first kid to get gay bashed in preschool, ever. Now look. But they are the face of America. Everything uh, is interracial, as it should be, but there are still racial problems. One of them, in fact, is sitting behind the couch in uh, a Len Dawson throwback. Uh, I'm kidding, but if I was you, I would have thrown that one back. Come on, folks. All right. <laughs> look, there's a lot of pressure for successful black people because they have to worry about being perceived as sellouts by their own people. So if you talk like this, all your people make fun of you for acting white. But have you seen the way white people act lately? They're like, yo, what's up? So pretty soon if you're black and you walk up to your friends like, yo, what's up? They're gonna go, stop trying to act white. What do you mean it's all right? It was great. You'd love to steal that one. Hey, what is this, the blood side of the room? <laughs> you guys are... All right, look. A new stat came out that the gap between the rich and the poor is, uh, of course, on the rise. And among blacks, it's even the same now as whites. Now, is this affecting the black community more than it affects the white community because of the perception of unity and uh, sticking together? Yes. Patrice. Yes, it is affecting uh, a certain amount of uh, black people. Um, but me, I mean, being that I'm a rich black American, I'm trying to race away from these poor blacks as fast as my caddy will take me. <laughs> but even the fact, right, Rudy, Rudy, aren't we rich blacks trying to do that? No, we're not. I'm not. <laughs> I wish I was rich. Just the fact that you have a red caddy tells me you're never really going to get away. <laughs> you'll be, at best, you'll be ghetto fabulous, but you're never going to be like... That's the whole point. <laughs> you're never going to have the brownstone in Fort Greene and be walking so like what, a light skin. I'm just trying to and, tell and you. And you know, why is that acting white, though? Why is... Don't blame me. You're the ones that say it's acting white. And you're saying it. That's your topic. But, <laughs> yeah, but I did not say it. Jeez, I said uh, because of the obvious truth that among black people, if you talk like a white person, they go, oh, you're white, you're white. What's like a white person? This is what, that's the arrogance of Don't white be people. So what is like a white person? Using the right you words? You so Correct speech? Are you pretending like a white person? Are you See, pretending? That's after all these years in comedy, yes. that, you, that black people don't always go like, well, here's the white guy walking like this. That's what a white guy does. That's what white guys do. No, you say, this is a white guy. This is <laughs> right here. <Kevin>. Yes. <laughs> How did I get involved in this race show? See? What did I do? That's what did I do to you? He's the white guy in the chair. Yeah, he's the white guy. Exactly. Look at the way I grew up in a black neighborhood. Wait. What? Yeah, well, I had a black person who lived across the street from us. <laughs> is, that, well, is that who you bought your coke from? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Cap. It was I. I lived across the street from Cap Calloway. I'm playing, Kevin. Jesus Christ. Cap right, Calloway. I lived across. Uh, the street. All right, let's Cap, let the cribs talk for a second, boys. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't think I don't think rich black people should be held responsible for you know the plight of other black people. Once you reach a certain level of success, it's just natural to move on. I mean, if that wasn't the case, politically incorrect would still be on in this time slot. <laughs> no, I totally, I, I, I totally disagree with that. I think black people should take care of the rich black people should have or feel some responsibility for all the poor white people. We have a problem. We haven't had all good black leaders people, since Public people. Enemy broke up. But we really see, that's another thing though, black people don't really... Please pretend we as if you're rich. Please. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I got a couple hundred in the bank. I'm a hundred air, and that counts. Oh. Um, black black people foods. really don't have a leader. Our leaders are appointed to us by somebody. We don't vote for our leaders. We just, Al Sharpton is We didn't one of your vote leaders. for him. We just decided uh, to be he's one. He's your leader. You got no, no. <laughs> No, I'm going to tell you something right now. And he's going to be the president. Is, wait a minute, Kevin. Al Sharpton is not our leader. Yes. Let me tell you something. Black people ain't vote for nobody with no perm. I'm sorry. That's right. Oh, I'll tell you happen. exactly what it is. You guys are playing innocent, and I'm damn getting mad. You know Al Sharpton, the only reason you like him is because he irritates us the most. That's how you decide who's a leader. Whoever pisses yes. us off the most. Thank you. So let's call it the way it is. We just call it the way it was. Homeschooling has become a fast-growing phenomenon. 
My doorman Steve has a theory on what's uh, wrong with the schools today. Let's uh, listen to him for a second. When I had to go to school, I had to read the whole book, or a half the book, or three quarters of the book, just to pass the exam, or study it, or a book report. Today, they got the textbook, they got the answers on the question behind the book, and they still fail. So I don't know what's going on with the schooling today, and it, lo it looks very bad. I have to see him every morning. Every morning. <laughs> How you doing, kid? The, uh, not only is there homeschooling, it's, it just used to be like the rural whites, like, you know, Randy Weaver types would homeschool the kids, but now it's big among the black people again. Why do you think there's been such a rise in black preschooling? Rudy. Well, the reason, because the curriculum sucks. And you got third graders that are angry, and they're the size of Patrice. So it's like, I'm not sending my kids to that school. It's true, there's a lot of violence in the school. It's violence, that's all it is. I think it depends upon the individual situation. I mean, some people need homeschooling. Like, you know, like in Patrice's case, he couldn't squeeze out of his bedroom door. <laughs> He's really gunning for it. Yeah, he really is. I can screen. understand. He really is shaped like a tampon, and I'm fed up with him. Wow. <laughs> Well, we're, we're doing homeschooling. Uh, we have, I, have a, I have a daughter, my wife and I, we have, uh, we're doing homeschooling, and we have uh, two priests that come over and uh, teach uh, Good thing my daughter it. in the basement. That's home right. <laughs> Very nice. Now, uh, one of the biggest reasons why black people now are keeping their kids home and teaching them, because they are giving images to their children from their history. It, me coming up, we didn't have too much African American. Don't applaud, please. No, we didn't have too much African American stuff. I mean, I remember well, coming up. You as have a, kid. a whole month. Columbus, <laughs> Columbus. Exactly. Now, that's the problem. The problem is we have a whole month, the whole year, and everybody knows this. You have the forty Lincoln presidents, free the slaves, forty-two too. presidents up on the board, and then you know you have one picture of Martin Luther King in February, and exactly. on the twenty-eighth they rip it down. What that's about the dead presidents? You don't count them? I ah. understand. That's true. That's it. That's yeah, listen to me. Look, they don't teach anything black in, in schools these days. Are you crazy? You gotta send them to like. Kitty Claw High to get a black, but then you don't get any Kitty yes, Claw, Mr. Black people. It's just it's that colorful yeah. you know. Look, I don't care how you live your life, folks. Just don't leave me alone with these people. We'll be right back. This is the part of the show where we take news stories from lots of different papers and see how far we can go, right? Oh, I like that. Okay, we call it improv. Some people call it the New York Times. <laughs> <laughs> White House Press Secretary Ari Fleischer has announced he'll be leaving his post in July. Oh. The official reason, of course, is that he's tired, blah, blah, blah. But let's face it, we're just trying not to provoke the Arabs. I mean, Ari Fleischer, why don't we just uh, have a picture of Mohammed up there eating a pork chop, for Christ's sakes, huh? <laughs> it's a little too Jewish. Anybody? Yeah, I mean, I really feel bad for it. It's like, how are we going to replace a guy who says whatever he wants to say, the best ever? No, wait. What the hell did I just say? He, he's the best. You're, you're the minute, new candidate minute. for the president. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He's the he's black the sellout. Best, wait a minute. <laughs> he's the best person that says what he's told to say ever. And yeah. you're going to miss him. That there makes no sense at all, does it? Anybody? Nah. It makes sense <laughs> to me for some weird reason. It was reason. funny, but there, it had to follow the first part, and that was the problem. Damn! Damn. All right, let's talk about this then. Tongue splitting. This is like the new thing. They slit the tongue mm. like that. Oh, I like that. Ah, the kids today. Yeah. They say it's more snake-like. What do you guys think? It's kind of hot. I think Patrice should have it done. That way he can eat quicker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, they do a lot of crazy stuff. The tongue piercing was kind of far. Now this is taking it a little bit too extreme. I mean, it's quite uh, to me, it looks like Satanism in, in, in a crazy kind of way. I like it. I think, you know, yeah, my grandmother, she used to have a plate in her mouth. <laughs> Did she? And, yeah. Back and, in uh, Ireland? Back in Ireland. They, had, they had actually come from Africa. Ah. And uh, that tradition <laughs> continued. And uh, a lot of the meanies had plates, saucers uh, in their lips. You know, <laughs> big plates. You know? As a way of breaking down Iraqi POWs, this yeah. is the next story since we're on a roll. Oh. Uh, U.S. officials are playing Metallica and Barney. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. What's, what's the source? Because this sounds like totally ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, like how many torture techniques did they go through before they figured out Barney was the way to go? You know? <laughs> Hopefully that was, you know, before the testicle clamps. You know? Right. <laughs> but after, like, you know, Peter Cetera and, you know. Well, the Metallica, I mean, that's actually a good thing. The safest place to be during a terrorist attack would probably be at a Metallica concert. You know? That's right. They're not going to come anywhere near them. No, the safest place is to be in Harlem, because y'all think the terrorists are looking for us. They're looking for y'all asses. 
Oh, you guys want to jump shit, huh? All right. Mm -hmm. A new study shows. All right. A new study shows. You want to jump ship? I. Right. A new study shows that one in five girls under 15 years old has had sex, and one in seven has been pregnant. Wow. That's pretty sick. You all four blocks. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> I think the Spice Girls started it. Those English hookers turned out our 10-year-olds with their stupid lunchboxes. The lunchbox campaign is what happened. But that's biological. If you can have a baby at 13 or 14, that's, that's real. That's, yes. You know, I mean, I'm an older father, so I want to be a grandfather earlier. Yeah, I see what you know, to do. So it started. He's gonna so be opening up on the R. Kelly tour. You know, so uh, <laughs> no, I just had a baby. You know, I, and thank God because I had frozen my sperm years ago. And uh, not that I want to get into that. Yeah, but I did. <laughs> the number of uh, fall television shows starring minorities uh, has never been higher. Mm -hmm. With the Goldbergs, the first black lead on a sitcom, NBC in five years. What do we say about this? I thought there's always been blacks. I mean, the WB, yeah. there's more blacks in the WB than on Thomas Jefferson's plantation, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I love that sitcom, Julia. <laughs> you know, that was good. That was you know, a good that's show. The, oh, we had Jim she David on here one time, and that's still the oldest thing I've ever heard on the show. It really is. <laughs> Jeez, I'm the only one that remembers that. Julia. These people are, I'm 90, these people are 20. Wasn't, a, was, wasn't there a black show that uh, followed Uncle Buck? Hmm? Oh, that was Kevin's canceled show. Uncle Buck. It's like ten year olds in a <laughs> But they appreciated I think they appreciated the meanness of the spirit of that one. Um, no, I love you know, He's attacking Uncle Buck. No, and WB, WB doesn't even have black shows. No, it doesn't. No, you know what? The the trend was they would they would all build their, their stations up on the black shows and then they get rid of us and yep. they all build on UPS. Yes. You guys are living in a damn dream no, world. No, they're not. That's they what they did. They built it on Fresh Prince, Cosby, uh, uh, the WB had yeah. something. I guess it really must be That's what they did. I guess it I guess it must be amazing to live in this kind of world where everything we do is evil and everything you do is good. <laughs> Why do you always say we? Colin, you're uh, Mick, white. you're not white. You're not the white man. You're you're a potato eating uh No, he's <laughs> He's boiling uh, nothing. You're poor like us. He's Eminem, man. The average. <laughs> he's Eminem. You're yeah, the blacks yeah. of Europe. Wait, they, uh, are, you, are you really the black? Blacks I mean, the blacks of Europe. We have to get on this thing. The average American watches 135,000 commercials a year. You don't want to fall behind, do you? So I don't know why I didn't tell you that. Said we'll be right back. <laughs> Well, you know what? When Iraq fell, hundreds of ancient treasures were stolen from the Museum of Antiquities in Baghdad. Yes, I don't know what that is either. All right, leave me alone. <laughs> the plundering of one of the world's greatest collection of artifacts is a terrible tragedy. But luckily, there's some good news. Several newer pieces of art were saved, pictures that were kept by Saddam Hussein in his own private quarters. Here are those pictures. These are the real replicas of art found in Saddam's safe houses. <laughs> Tonight we'll look a little deeper into these pieces from the Saddam collection and here to help me is an art consultant and my neighbor, yes, and she knows Steve too, Avis Cardella. Avis. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Avis. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. <laughs> okay, this first piece is a lovely oil on canvas. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm interested in that. Is that like a postage uh, U.S. mail thing up there? What is that? <laughs> I don't know what that no, is, I but mean, I can I can I can speak to the other um, aspects elements. Of, of the other elements of this painting. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's it's this it's not Picasso, but it's it's an example of something that is called fantasy art, and it's um, used on album covers and book covers and things like that, and it tends to be popular with adolescent boys. Adolescent boys, so you're saying mm -hmm. Saddam might be an arrested development. That's a possibility, that yeah. yeah. It's interesting, too, because Saddam, you know, he had a lot of problems with his family, and this looks like, to me, you know, this, it, I don't, wouldn't say a castration complex, but that damn, oh. uh, whatever it is, is trying to bite him right there, isn't he? <laughs> I, I don't I don't see that, but um <laughs> Okay, let's move on then. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> you know, This is our next item. It's a marvelous yeah. little piece of work. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. 
obviously very cleverly uh, disguised, uh, brilliant. It, it, this is not Picasso either, is it? No, this is. I don't want to make a mistake, um, you know. <laughs> but this like this him. has this has um, interesting aspects of um, what is referred to when when people buy these. Uh, paintings. They usually like to relate to them as role playing. I don't know if Saddam relates to the Fabio character, to the the um, buxom babe, or to the Shrek guy in the back. But you know, um, whatever moves you. Well, well, let me ask you something. As a, is it, he's the sword trying to slay the snake or the dragon to get the hot girl and the evil? Isn't that kind of a hack thing? Like, isn't that everybody could do that from like a hundred years ago? It's kind of an old move, isn't it? <laughs> You mean it's the whole a idea of slaying this? Uh, well, yeah, it's that. It's that um, yeah, it's it's um it's an old fantasy. I mean, Freud would have a field day with this, but yeah. But um, I'll I, tell you why it's a good artist because they get the shadows. I always forget those. Yeah. Now let me just ask you. This is off the totally off the car, Avis. Yeah. If you were at an art gallery show, mm -hmm. you saw a guy like me, but what? Well, if I had my glasses, yeah. you saw me, maybe I'm, I'm just standing here looking like this mm -hmm. in the picture. Mm -hmm. Would you be attracted to me and say, oh, that guy's kind of cool? Um, just pretend you don't know me. Uh, mm. with, the, with the thumb in the mouth? All right, no, no. <laughs> Can I just walk away, like, deeply affected, thinking about it? Mm. Okay. Okay, how about this little uh, thing, huh? Um, yeah, this is another one where we might examine the role-playing aspect. I, I think um, he, the militaristic garb of, of the woman, um, I wonder perhaps if that isn't sort of like a, a way to transcend one's own sexuality. and. and talking about me? No, no, no. Oh, Saddam, no. Saddam, sorry. Uh, no. I get nervous. I'm, I'm talking about the owner of the painting. Yes. Right, what he might, he might feel. Oh, the yeah. owner. Yeah. And hey, what about the snow? Doesn't It doesn't snow in Iraq, does it? No, I don't think so. No, I didn't think so either. <laughs> what do you think this is? Do you think this is like the subconscious of Saddam? Or do you think this is his mother when he was little? <laughs> you never know, folks. You never know. Thanks to Avis Cardella. Thank you to Avis Cardella. These pictures are good as new insight. Thank you, darling. No, you're no good.